Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture of wind energy. So in this lecture we will practice few examples on the concept covered in the wind energy. If you recall our discussion in one of the lecture of the wind energy, we described the procedure for calculating the performance of the wind machine. So in this context we described few terms in the form of power coefficient, lift coefficient, drag coefficient, then tip speed ratio as well as the solidity. So all these terms are essential and very much important in calculating the performance of the wind machine. So in this lecture we will just revise or recap few of the concept which we have covered in the wind energy. So wind energy if you see in case of the wind energy the power coefficient is considered as the ratio of power extracted by the rotor to the power which is available in the free stream wind speed. So if you look at the equation here, here the CP it represented in the form of P suffix E that is the power which is extracted by rotor to the power which is available in the free stream wind speed. This PE it represents the power which is extracted by rotor. So sometimes in the literature you may observe that this PE is also represented as P output. So both are the same terms here either you can represent it in the form of P suffix E or P output it represents the power which is extracted by rotor and A is the swept frontal area of the machine that is nothing but the face area of the rotor and V infinity is the free stream wind speed and here also if you see it is represented as either U or V infinity. So in some of the literature it is represented as capital U and some literature it is represented as V suffix infinity. So V suffix infinity indicates the free stream wind speed and both this particular nomenclature carries the same meaning. So you can use either of this representation while solving these examples. So apart from the power coefficient, so another important term which is used in the calculation of the performance of the wind machine is the lift coefficient and a lift coefficient it is represented as C suffix capital L and the lift coefficient of the blade of a wind rotor is the ratio of lift force to the force of the free stream wind speed which is represented here in the denominator of this particular equation where FL is the lift force on the blade whereas AB represent here the projected area of the blade which is facing the wind. So now if you see here there are two terms coming in this equation that is lift force on the blade as well as AB that is the projected area of the blade which is facing the wind. So apart from the lift coefficient the another important term which is required in calculating the performance of the wind machine is the drag coefficient and drag coefficient of a blade of the wind rotor is the ratio of drag force that is represented here in the form of F suffix capital D and in the denominator it represents the force of the free stream wind speed again and the drag coefficient it is represented as C suffix D. In this case this FD is the drag force on the blade and again AB here is the projected area of the blade which is facing the wind. Here the lift coefficient and the drag coefficient if you just see these two equation there is only small change in that. Here in the numerator it is FD that is the drag force on the blade and in the lift coefficient the FL indicates the lift force on the blade of the rotor. So these two equation that is the lift coefficient and the drag coefficient these are important in calculating the performance of the wind machine. Apart from that the tip speed ratio which is represented as lambda here is the ratio of tip speed of the blade by wind speed that is again the free stream wind speed which is represented as V infinity and the tip speed of the blade is calculated by omega into r. So omega here is the angular velocity of the blade and r represent here the tip radius and this particular equation it holds good for the horizontal axis machine and apart from the tip speed ratio so another important parameter in the performance calculation is solidity of the blade. So solidity it is the ratio of blade area to the swept frontal area of the machine and the blade area is calculated as the A indicates here the area of the blade and if the rotor has n number of blade that is n may be 2, 3, 
फाइव सिक्स टेन और इवन ट्वेंटी सो दो मेनी नंबर ऑफ ब्लेड्स नीड टू बी मल्टीप्लाइड हियर टू गेट द एरिया ऑफ द ब्लेड्स राइट एंड इन दिस केस ऑल्सो दिस डेफिनेशन ऑफ सॉलिडिटी इट होल्ड्स गुड फॉर द हॉरिजेंटल एक्सिस मशीन वेयर एन इज द नंबर ऑफ ब्लेड एंड ए इज द एरिया ऑफ द ब्लेड हियर इट इज द ब्लेड लेंथ इन टू द कॉर्ड लेंथ एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस टू पैरामीटर वी कैन इजिली कैलकुलेट द एरिया ऑफ द ब्लेड एज वेल एज दिस आर इज द रेडियस ऑफ द ब्लेड ऑफ द पर्टिकुलर रोटर सो अकॉर्डिंगली वी कैन कैलकुलेट द सॉलिडिटी ऑफ द रोटर एज वेल सो विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस स्पेसिफिक टर्म वी कैन कैलकुलेट द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द विंड मशीन इजिली सो ना आफ्टर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द कैलकुलेशन पार्ट और यू कैन से द डिफरेंट टर्म्स विच आर इन्वॉल्व इन द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द विंड मशीन द मैक्सिमम सी पी दैट इज द पावर कोईपिशंट कैन ऑल्सो बी कैलकुलेटेड फ्रॉम द फॉलोइंग इक्वेशन सो यर इफ यू सी द इक्वेशन इट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड एज सी पी इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटीन बाय ट्वेंटी सेवन इन टू एक्सपोनशियल ऑफ माइनस जीरो पॉइंट थ्री फाइव थ्री एट इन टू लैमडा रेस टू पावर माइनस वन पॉइंट टू नाइन फोर सिक्स सो दिस लैमडा हियर इज द टीप स्पीड रेशो एंड वंस वी नो दिस टीप स्पीड रेशो वैल्यू वी कैन कैलकुलेट द सी पी दैट इज अ पावर को इपेशन वैल्यू वेरी इजीली सो द वेरिएशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सी पी दैट इज अ पावर को इपेशन विथ लैमडा कैन ऑल्सो बी टैबुलेटेड अकॉर्डिंगली बाय कंसिडरिंग द रेंज ऑफ द लैमडा वैल्यूज एज वेल सो यू कैन प्रैक्टिस दिस ऑन योर ओन जस्ट कंसिडर द लैमडा इन द स्पेसिफिक रेंज फॉर एग्जाम्पल से फ्रॉम वन टू टेन और फ्रॉम वन टू फिफ्टीन एंड जस्ट फाइंड आउट द करस्पॉन्डिंग सी पी वैल्यू एंड tabulate this particular data and the obtained cp value can be plotted in the form of cp versus lambda to find out the nature of the curve so you may observe that the cp value is increasing with the increasing the lambda and after certain interval of data you may find that the cp is almost constant and there is no much change in the value of the cp and this equation is the empirical equation and which is widely used and it yields an upper bound value on the cp which is regardless of the type of the wind machine the above equation has been modified for the propeller and the multi blade type rotors then in that case it need to be modified by taking the effect of drag into the account so just in the above equation we need to do small modification here that the remaining terms are more or less same in this equation except the addition of one particular term here which is epsilon and it is the ratio of drag coefficient to the lift coefficient and is valid only for lambda greater than 1 and this epsilon here it takes into account the effect of drag and the epsilon for the propeller rotors having the blade with aerofoil cross section is in the range of 0.008 to 0.02 whereas epsilon for the multi blade rotors having curved blades it is in the range of 0.05 to 0.1 so after understanding this concept of the wind machine as well as the performance calculation of the wind machine let us practice few examples on the similar line on the concept of the wind machine so now let us consider a example in which a propeller type wind machine is used which has a rotor diameter of 70 meter and is operating at a location having wind speed of 30 km per hour and rotating at 18 rpm so the rotational speed of the rotor is given as 18 rpm and the rotor diameter as i mentioned it is 70 meter so now with the help of this data calculate the power which machine can extract from the wind and in this case there are two parts in the first part only the wake rotation is considered for calculating the power which is extracted by machine from the wind and in the second case the wake rotation and the effects of drag are considered and in case of part 2 also the epsilon value is given as 0.0 1 so this value we need to use in the part 2 and the density of the air is given as 1.2 kg per meter cube 
So, with the help of this given data, we need to calculate the power which is extracted by a machine from the wind by using only the wake rotation first and then in the second part considering both wake rotation as well as the effect of drag into consideration, we need to calculate the power which is extracted by machine from the wind. So, now as we know in the example, the rotating speed of the rotor is given as 18 rpm. So, with the help of this 18 rpm, we can easily calculate the angular velocity here. So, the angular velocity can be calculated with the use of the following equation here because omega here is 18 rpm. So, simply by this conversion factor here, we can convert this 18 rpm into the radian per second. So, this is for the obvious reason, so that we can use this value for the further calculation. And once you multiply it by 2 into pi divided by 60 into 18, so it gets converted into the radian per second and the value of the omega here is now 1.88 radian per second. So, once we know the angular velocity, so with the help of the angular velocity, now we can calculate the tip speed ratio. So, the tip speed ratio as we know, it is the ratio of tip speed of blade to the wind speed and tip speed of the blade is calculated as omega into r and the wind speed is that is nothing but the free stream wind speed is v infinity or you can also use the another nomenclature here is that is capital U as I mentioned earlier also, you can use capital U here also, right. So, as in this equation we know the omega, we also know the r and we know the v infinity as well. So, by substituting this value, we can get the value of the lambda and the lambda value comes out to be around 7.896 here because if you see here, the omega is 1.88 radian per second, the radius is 35 because the diameter of the rotor is given as 70 meter, right. So, the diameter of rotor is given as 70 meter here. So, accordingly the radius is 35 meter. So, we have to substitute this value of r here that is 35 and the free stream wind speed is given here as 30 kilometer per hour. So, this 30 kilometer per hour value we have just converted into the meter per second and for that reason this is just the multiplication factor here and this is divided by 3600 that is we have just converted hour into the second so that it will match to the units and we can get the lambda in the form of 7.896. So, this is a small conversion here, I hope you can understand this conversion here very easily. So, with the help of this conversion now, we got the value of lambda as 7.896. So, now once we know the lambda that is the tip speed ratio, so with the help of lambda, we can calculate the power coefficient of the machine. In the part 1, considering the wake rotation, the theoretical power extracted by the machine from the wind, it can be calculated from the equation which is given here. Suppose if you see this is the equation which can be used only when the wake rotations are considered that is Cp equal to 16 by 27 into exponential of minus 0 0.3538 into lambda raised to power minus 1.2946. And this equation, it is used only when the wake rotations are considered. So, once we substitute the value of lambda in this equation, we will get the value of Cp as 0.578 and this Cp is nothing but the power coefficient. And we know the power coefficient is represented in the form of Cp is equal to Pe that is nothing but the power which is extracted by rotor from the wind divided by the free stream wind speed that is 1 by 2 rho into a that is area of the rotor into v infinity cube that is free stream wind speed. So, after rearranging this term, so P e can be written as C p into 1 by 2 into rho a into v infinity to the power 3. So, in this equation, most of these values are known here because C p we can get the value of C p from the above equation here that is 0 0.578 into half into 1.2 that is the density of the air. So, here it is a density of air into the area as I said it is pi r square and here r is 35 meter and this indicates free stream wind speed that is v infinity. So, 30 into we have just converted this 
value into meter per second here. So, we can convert this entire term in the form of watt. So, that is what is the reason to convert this value in the specific unit so that we can get the entire term in the form of watt. So, now if you do this calculation, we get the P in the form of 771.97 10 raise to power 3 watt that is equivalent to a 0.771 megawatt. So, this is the power which is extracted by machine from the wind when only the wake rotations are considered. So, in part 2 considering the wake rotation as well as the effect of drag. So, the theoretical power which is extracted by machine from the wind can be calculated using this particular equation here which is represented in the form of Cp is equal to 16 by 27 this part is same as that of the previous equation minus epsilon into the lambda and this epsilon here it is the ratio of drag coefficient to the lift coefficient and this particular epsilon value it is valid for lambda greater than 1. So, now once you substitute the value of lambda in this equation here the epsilon value is 0 0.011. So, after calculating this, the Cp comes out to be around 0.526. Similarly, we know the Cp which is represented in the form of P divided by 1 by 2 rho into V cube. So, here also just after a small rearrangement of the terms, we can calculate the power which is extracted by rotor when the wake rotation as well as the effect of drag is considered. Now, if you see here the power extracted by the rotor comes out to be around 0 0.702 megawatt. So, considering the previous case, the power extracted by the rotor in the second case is a lower than that of the previous case and that is mainly because of the effect of drag and I hope you must have studied this part also in one of the lecture of the wind energy and with the help of this particular example also now it must be clear to all of you that how this particular drag it affects the power extraction capacity of the machine. So, with this you can see here we solved two part of the one example that is considering the wake rotation of the rotor as well as considering the wake rotation as well as the effect of drag into the account. So, once we solve this particular example, so in this example if you see here we have calculated the power coefficient as well as the drag coefficient as well as the lift coefficient of the rotor. So, after studying this particular example which is mainly focused on the power extraction capacity of the rotor which is in terms of the electrical power. So, this particular example it mainly discusses the power extraction capacity of the rotor which is mainly in terms of the electrical power. So, let us try to solve another example in which machine operates a water pump which is slightly different than the example which you have covered just now. So, in case of the second example if you see here the main dimensions of the rotor which is a multi blade wind machine need to be calculated and here the blade length is given as 1.5 meter and the rotor has 20 number of blades which is mentioned here as the number of blades of the rotor are 20 and the solidity of this particular rotor is 0.5 and it is operating at a design speed of 20 kilometer per hour and the machine operates a water pump which is having a capacity of 5.0 meter cube per hour with a lift of around 10 meter. Assume the density of water as 996 kg per meter cube, reciprocating pump efficiency as 0.5 and the transmission efficiency of the rotor to the pump to be 0.8. And in this case also the density of the air is 1.2 kg per meter cube and the Cp max value in this case is given as 0 0.16 and lambda is 0 0.8. In case if this Cp max value is not given then the Cp max value need to be calculated using either of the equation which we have discussed in the previous example. So, the obtained Cp value need to be used to calculate the remaining parameter in the example. So, in case of this particular example, the pump capacity is given and that is 5.0 meter cube per hour. So, with the help of this pump capacity, we can calculate the ideal power which is required 
to pump the water. So, with the help of this ideal power which is required to pump the water, we can also calculate the power which is available at the rotor. And once we know the power which is available at the rotor, we can easily calculate the remaining main dimensions of the rotor. As we know the water pump capacity is given as 5 meter cube per hour. So, the ideal power which is required to pump the water can be calculated in this particular way. This is the water pump having the capacity of 5 and we have just converted this again into the meter cube per second here. It is multiplied by the density of water and this is nothing but G that is 9.81 and 10 is the lift that is a 10 meter. So, this gives the power which is the ideal power which is required to pump the water and it comes out to be around 135.70 watt. So, you just please take a note of unit here because here meter cube per hour we have converted first into meter cube per second and remaining terms as you know this is kg per meter cube, this is acceleration due to gravity that is g standard unit and this is nothing but the lift that is in meter that is a 10 meter. So, we can get the value in the form of this watt. So, once we have the ideal power which is required to pump the water, now we can easily calculate the power which is available at the rotor because we know the efficiency of reciprocating pump which is given as 0.5 and the transmission efficiency from the rotor to the pump to be around 0.8. So, with the help of these two efficiency, we can easily calculate the power require at the rotor because we have to simply divide it by the efficiency values so that you can get the power required at the rotor and it comes out to be around 339.25 watt. So, this is the power which is required at the rotor so that it can work effectively to pump the water. So, once we know the power which is required at the rotor, so with the help of the CP we can calculate the remaining dimensions of the rotor because we already know the power which is required at the rotor. Cp value is known in this particular equation here. So, V infinity is also given and the density is also known that is density of the air. So, this area is the area of the rotor that is pi r square. So, after substituting this value here in this equation and this P is 339.5. Watt, so, which we have taken from here. So, this P is 339.25 watt. So, once we substitute all these values here, we will get the equation in this particular form. And now, in this equation, this is the only unknown term. So, by just simply doing some small calculation here, we will get the R as 2.56 meter. So, this is the rotor radius and it is calculated as r is equal to 2.56 meter. Once we know the r, so with the help of this r, we can easily calculate the remaining dimensions of the rotor that is nothing but the mean chord length and it can be calculated from the definition of the solidity because solidity if you remember, it is the ratio of the blade area to the swept frontal area of the machine that is called as a face area of the machine and the blade area is n into a divided by frontal area that is the face area of the machine is pi r square. In this case, we know the number of blade, the rotor has 20 number of blade into the area of this particular blade here which is 1.5 into the mean chord length. So, this is a blade length into C that is called as a mean chord length of the blade and these remaining parameters, these parameters are already known because this r is nothing but the radius of the blade. This is pi and 0 0.5 is the solidity which is also given in the example. So, by simply rearranging this term here, we get the mean chord length as 0 0.343 meter. So, now with the help of these two equation, we could calculate the radius that is the radius of the rotor in the previous case if you remember here this is the radius of the rotor and also the mean chord length of the blade. 
So, with the help of this, we could calculate these two terms here. So, once we know this C, that is the mean chord length and the radius of the rotor, we can calculate the angular velocity of the rotor and it can be calculated from the following equation that is lambda is equal to omega r upon v infinity, where the numerator term here, it represents the tip speed of the blade and the denominator, it represents the free stream wind speed. In this particular equation, the r is known, the v infinity value, it is also known and lambda is also given in the example. So, with the help of these three terms, we can easily calculate the omega that is the angular velocity of the rotor. So, once we substitute these values in this equation in the form of say lambda, v infinity and r, so we can calculate the omega that is the angular velocity of the rotor. So, here if you see the lambda value is given as 0 0.8, this is the velocity which is the value given in the example. We have just simply converted into the meter per second again here and this r is the 2.56 meter. So, now once you do this simple calculation, the omega comes out to be around 1.736 radian per second. So, again here this value is given in the form of radian per second and if you need to convert it into the RPM, so just simply multiply it by this factor which converts the radian per second into the RPM that is 60 upon 2 into pi and the omega value after conversion is comes out to be around 16.57 RPM. So, the rotor is rotating with this much RPM with the wind speed which is given as 20 kilometer per hour. So, with the help of these equations, we could calculate the radius that is 2.56, mean chord length that is 0.343 meter and the omega as 16.57 rpm. So, with this, I hope you must have understood how to calculate the performance of the wind machine and as well as how to calculate the dimensions of the rotor. These two examples in the different line. So, the first example, it mainly discusses the power extraction capacity of the rotor that is mainly a electrical power and in the second example, machine operates a water pump and it is having a specific capacity that is a 5 meter cube per hour. So, in the similar line, there may be example in the assignment where the pump capacity is given in the some different range. So, we can easily calculate the main dimensions of the rotor accordingly and similarly in the other hand, if the some specific values of the lambda are given, then with the help of the lambda value, we can also calculate the power coefficient. So, as we have discussed in the first example, so just considering the wake rotation only and with the help of lambda value, we can easily calculate the power coefficient. Whereas, in case if the wake rotation and the effect of drag, both are need to be considered. So, accordingly, we need to use the equation and then we can find out the power coefficient of the specific rotor. So, with this, we will end this lecture. And regarding this lecture, if you have any doubt, so feel free to contact me at vvgo at the rate iitg.ac.in. Thank you. Regarding this course as well as the content of the course, if you have any doubt, feel free to contact us at vvgo at the rate iitg.ac.in or you can also contact to the Anand Lakshmi at the rate iitg.ac.in.